Hello and welcome to Investor Info. Obtaining your first credit card is a significant milestone as well as a major adjustment. You may already understand how credit cards operate and how to use them safely, but as the old saying goes, the devil is in the details. Understanding those aspects before you dive in will save you money and help you develop excellent credit faster. In today's video, we'll be diving into the top seven things to know before getting a credit card. But before we begin, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and click on the bell icon so you'll get notified every time we upload a new video. Trust me, you are not going to want to miss out. But with all that being said, let's get started. Number one. Number one on our list is making a security deposit. A secured credit card indicates that money must be placed with the credit card provider in order to create an account. This sum is referred to as a security deposit, and like a security deposit provided to a landlord when renting an apartment, it is maintained by the credit card issuer while the account is open. A secured credit card is guaranteed by a cash deposit made when the account is opened. The deposit is normally equivalent to your credit limit. Thus, if you deposit $200, your credit limit will be $200. Secured credit cards can assist consumers with poor credit or short credit histories in overcoming this contradiction. Secured credit cards are intended for persons with poor or no credit. If you become behind on your payments, you may lose this deposit. However, if you constantly make on-time payments and keep your spending far below the card's limit, you may build solid credit in a couple of months. At that time, your issuer may upgrade the account to a standard unsecured card, or you may apply for an unsecured card while keeping the secured card open. Your deposit would be reimbursed in any instance. Prepaid debit cards are not the same as secured credit cards. Prepaid debit cards are loaded with money, and purchases are debited from the balance. This card activity has no effect on your credit. You'll have to make monthly credit card payments with secured credit cards. Charges aren't removed from your security deposit, and card activity does harm your credit. Number two. Second on our list is avoiding interest by paying your bills on time. When you take out a loan, you will almost always have to pay interest. Even though credit cards are a sort of loan, you may avoid paying interest on the majority of them. Interest is a cost charged by a lender for borrowing money. The interest you pay is usually a proportion of the amount you borrow. In general, you may avoid credit card interest by paying your debt in full each month before the grace period expires. Grace periods must be at least 21 days long. Credit card companies must mail your billing statement before the start of your grace period so that you have time to take advantage of their grace period. You don't have to pay any interest regardless of how high your credit card APR is as long as you pay your credit card payment in full every month. Simply put, if you pay your payment in full, interest will not begin to accrue on any purchases until the next due date. If you pay your following month's payment in full, no interest will be charged providing you only use your card for purchases. If you keep it up, you'll never have to pay interest. However, if you do not pay your account in full, that is, if you carry a portion of your amount over to the following month, you will not only be charged interest on that carried debt, but interest will also begin to accrue on subsequent purchases immediately. It's evident by now that the primary rule of credit cards is to never put anything on them that you can't pay off in full when the bill arrives, and to always pay off the payment in full when it arrives. Anything else would be an expensive error. If you do, don't be concerned with the real interest rate on the card, as it will be meaningless to you. Instead, concentrate on the benefits of using the card. Number three. Third on our list is credit cards are not emergency funds. Personal financial experts advocate having an emergency fund, which is generally enough money saved to cover three to six months worth of living expenses. An emergency fund can help you get through a period of income interruption without falling into significant debt by placing living costs on credit cards or taking out loans. Having said that, a credit card is not an emergency fund. Using a credit card in an emergency is the same thing as taking out a loan. It indicates you're taking out a loan to meet an unexpected bill because you can't afford to pay it out of pocket, 
which means you'll have to repay the money. The interest you'll wind up paying on your amount is the most obvious reason you shouldn't use a credit card as an emergency fund. If an expensive issue develops and you can't afford to pay it out of your monthly cash flow, you'll wind up carrying the debt over to the next month. Because most credit cards carry double-digit interest rates, this might quickly become costly. When you put a balance on a credit card, you're technically already in debt. However, even if it is an emergency, making one credit card charge might start a chain reaction that leads to further credit card charges and perhaps more debt than you can afford to repay. If you wind up carrying a tiny credit card load compared to your overall spending limit across all of your cards, your credit score may not suffer as a result. However, if you continue to charge unexpected costs on your credit cards to the point where your balance continues to rise, your credit score may suffer. Your credit usage ratio is a significant aspect in determining your credit score. This ratio calculates how much of your overall credit limit you're utilizing at any one time. If that ratio remains at or below 30%, you should be in fine condition. Credit score harm can result if you go beyond that barrier. Number 4 Another thing to know is to never put anything on a credit card that you won't be able to pay in full when the bill arrives. Think one missing credit card payment won't hurt your budget? Well, you'd be wrong. When you begin missing payments, your credit card balance will be carried over to the following billing period. But this isn't all. You'll be charged a financing fee, which is the interest, varying from 2% to 3.54%, applied to your total amount due, which includes your remaining balance plus the outstanding balance. This compounding monthly interest will make it more difficult for you to pay your credit card payments in full on time. As a result, it's simple to accumulate debt with only one missed credit card payment. In addition to the financing charge, the bank will charge you a late payment cost. Even if you just forgot to pay your credit card payment, you will be charged up to 8% of the entire amount owing for each month that you pay after the due date. Late payment fees generate interest since they are added to your debt. As a result, if you start skipping credit card payments, you'll find your debts swiftly stacking up. Know when your credit card payment will be deposited to your account to prevent late penalties. Some payments are only sent to the account two to five days after the payment date. Just to be sure, check with your credit card company. The easiest way to keep a credit card under control is to pay off the balance in full when the statement arrives each month. This prevents interest costs from piling up on your bill, which you don't want. If you buy stuff you can't truly afford, it will be hard to pay off the whole amount when it arrives, and here is when the problems begin. If you ever find yourself in a scenario where you can't pay off the entire payment, Put the credit card on hold for a month or two and live off of your bank account until the card is paid off completely. This prevents your errors from accumulating. Number 5 Next on our list is spending below your card limit. The entire amount of money that may be charged to a credit card, including purchases, interest charges, and fees, is referred to as the credit limit. Every credit card has its own credit limit, which is determined by lenders based on credit scores and other signs of trustworthiness. Your credit limit might be $500, $1,000, $5,000, or even higher. Whatever your credit limit is, going above it is usually a terrible idea. The following are the most common consequences of exceeding your credit limit. Your credit card may be declined. You may be charged an over-limit fee. Your interest rates may increase, your credit limit may decrease, your credit score may decrease, your credit issuer may close your credit account, and fees for exceeding your credit limit may apply. Going over your credit limit is virtually never a smart idea. Even if you have over-limit protection, the costs of exceeding your credit limit tend to outweigh the benefits of making an additional purchase on your credit card. You can seek a credit limit increase from your card issuer if you want to modify your credit limit. In most circumstances, you may request a higher credit limit online by simply going into your credit card account. No need to call customer service or wait on hold. If you have strong credit, your credit limit increase request is more likely to be accepted, so check your credit score before contacting your lender. When you seek an increase in your credit limit, your lender will run a hard credit inquiry on your credit report. 
This may lower your credit score by a few points, but if your credit limit request is accepted, your additional credit should reduce your overall credit use and increase your credit score. Number six. Coming up next on our list is how to deal with credit card fraud. Credit card fraud refers to any type of theft or fraud involving a credit card. The goal of credit card fraud is to buy products without paying for them or to steal money from someone else's credit account. The various types of credit card fraud can be divided into three categories. The first is lost or stolen cards being used without their owner's permission. The second is credit cards being skimmed, which is when the card is cloned or copied with a special swipe machine to make a duplicate of the card. And the third is card details, such as card number, cardholder name, date of birth, and address being stolen, often from online databases or through email scams, then sold and used. It will just take you a few minutes every few days to detect credit card theft. It may seem inconvenient, but failing to notice that someone is using your credit card information might result in a large cost. Check your bank statements on a frequent basis, at least every few days. If you see a charge on your account that you don't recognize, contact your credit card company and inquire about it. Examine your credit report at least once a month. This will notify you if someone has applied for credit cards in your name. If you get mail that you did not anticipate, contact the person who sent it to you. If you don't receive the mail you anticipate, contact the person who was supposed to send it in case it was intercepted and stolen. There are several things you can do to reduce your chances of being a victim of credit card fraud. When paying for items, don't allow your card out of your sight. You won't know if it's been cloned or tampered with. Be wary if you are contacted when you have not requested to be contacted. This includes avoiding any unexpected phone calls, letters, emails, or individuals knocking on your door. Don't give away any personal information or login information, such as your PIN or password. Number 7. Last but not least is building good credit. One of the primary motivations for getting your first credit card is to improve your credit score. However, if you're not cautious, it might have the reverse effect. Everything is dependent on what you do. Every month, your card issuer will report your credit card activity to credit bureaus, which are the firms that produce the credit reports that serve as the foundation for your credit ratings. The information presented includes whether or not your payments were made on time and how much of your available credit you utilized. Late payments are a negative thing. It's not a good idea to max up your credit card. To ensure that your credit card activity contributes as much as possible, make sure to pay in whole and on time every month, and keep well below your credit limit. A smart rule of thumb is to keep your balance below 30% of your available credit at all times. You may also monitor your credit ratings to determine where you stand. Purchase a credit building product or a secured loan. A credit builder loan is precisely what it sounds like. It exists only to assist people in building credit. Typically, the money you borrow is held in an account by the lender and is not released to you until the loan is returned. It's a type of forced savings plan, and your contributions are recorded to credit bureaus. Credit unions and community banks are the most common providers of these loans. Another alternative is to inquire about a secured loan for credit building if you have money on deposit with a bank or credit union. The collateral in these cases is money in your account or a certificate of deposit. The interest rate is normally slightly higher than the account interest rate, but it may be much cheaper than your other alternatives. And there you have it, folks. Now that we've discussed the top seven things to know before getting a credit card, let us know in the comment section down below which one you're willing to try out first. Remember to always do your research and make the most of your resources. If you found this video helpful, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this one. See you in the next video!